What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. In the video today, we're going back to the basics of repainting dinosaurs. We're going to be using brushes and basic acrylic paint in repainting this Attack Pack Velociraptor uh, to look like the original Jurassic Park Velociraptor because it's one of my personal favorites and it's a super easy repaint to do. This video, like I said, is going back to the basics. It's going to be for the person out there who has never either repainted anything before or feels like they're not good enough at it. Believe me guys, anybody can repaint dinosaurs. Any of the Velociraptors from the Attack Pack line are great entry level raptors to start repainting, mainly because they are readily available everywhere and they're super affordable. Plus they're very limited on articulation spots so you don't have to worry about painting around any ball joints or inserted molded joints, which can be a problem if you are new to uh, repainting and you're not really familiar at how to prep those models. So for a great entry level Raptor, you can't go wrong with the attack pack. So before we start slinging paint, we need to prime the dinosaur first. For that I'm using Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. This is for plastic models, so it works great on the Mattel dinosaurs. And also, if you don't have an airbrush and you, don't, you can't airbrush your primer on, it's another great option right here. So what I'm going to do is take this Velociraptor and I'm going to hot glue it down to this little base so I have something to hold onto. I don't have a hot glue gun at the moment, so I'm using a lighter to warm the hot glue stick up and then put a big glob of it on the bottom of the foot. Uh, this is just a, uh, a very uh, non-permanent uh, solution to getting this thing to stick down to this base so I can hold it and I'm not touching it with my hands and getting you know junk all over the, the model or anything like that. Uh, it just works really well for being able to pick it up and turn it around and everything while you're painting it. So I definitely recommend attaching your Attack Pack Raptor to some sort of base while you're painting it. So now I'm going to take it out here to the shop and I'm going to uh, lay down a coat of primer on this thing. Again, I'm using the Tamiya primer on this. I found this at Hobby Lobby, it's about $10, but you can probably find it on Amazon, eBay, or any sort of Google search will probably show you where you can purchase this at in your area. What I'm gonna do is apply one thin coat first, about 10 inches away from the model, covering all the surface of the dinosaur, making sure I get everything and then I'm going to let it dry and then after it has fully cured, which usually I'll use a hair dryer to dry it, which just speeds up the process and allows me to get that second coat of primer on quicker. So the primer is all on here and I'm going to take the hair dryer and I'm going to blow dry very gently just to make sure all of the primer has cured and it's dry so I don't uh, get any streaky streaks with my paintbrush. So it's uh, nice to have a hair dryer on hand if you're going to be painting. It really speeds up the process. So the first color, this is going to be our base color. We're going in with some of this mocha right here. So I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of water. You can see here the water really just helps with the acrylic to uh, flow, especially with these thick acrylic um, craft paints. You really want to cut it with some water. Not so much a wash-like consistency, but you want to make sure that when you're putting it on, it goes on smooth and it's not super streaky or chunky because you don't want to cover up the detail of the sculpt on any of these raptors. So always remember to thin your acrylics down with a little bit of water. There's no real science behind it. You just kind of have to judge it, you know, but dip your brush in the water and then, you know, put it in the paint and kind of test it on the plate or on your hand or whatever. And then if it's a good consistency, then you can start applying it to the raptor. And if it's too thick, then, you know, dip your brush back in the water, go back over it and uh, fix it until where it's nice and smooth. And with that flesh tone all applied and dried, it's time to move on to the next step. So we're taking burnt umber, mixing it with a little bit of water, and I want to create a wash kind of glaze-like consistency. And I'm not using the burnt umber straight out of the pot. I am cutting it with a little bit of water, taking my brush, dipping it in the water, mixing it in the paint, pulling some aside, mixing it around, making sure that it is the right wash-like consistency because I want some of that flesh tone to still show through um, underneath that wash. So I'm basically taking it and just applying it all over strategic parts of the model, letting it wash down into all the recesses. Obviously that's what a wash does. And uh, that way it really makes all those shadows and stuff kind of stick out in a way on the Raptor. I'm not going for screen accuracy with this. Like I said, this is a beginner's video, so we're not gonna go full on Stan Winston maquette screen accurate with this Velociraptor. We're gonna try to keep it basic and as simple as possible so you guys can have a really awesome classic brown Velociraptor in your collection. 
So with that layer of wash applied and dried, we're going to move on to the next layer, and that is that burnt umber. We're sticking with that, but we're keeping it thin. We're keeping it transparent. That's the key to a clean-looking model. Now, the consistency of this layer here is not as thin as the wash that we previously applied. This is a little bit of a thicker glaze. It's not straight out of the pot. It is cut with water to help with flow, but I am keeping it thin and transparent. And I'm taking my brush and I'm going around and I'm doing little dot patterns and little stripes and I'm accenting little things here and creating little designs and kind of breaking up the pattern a little bit to, to make it look interesting, you know. But always use your judgment, use your imagination, be creative with this. Don't be afraid to pull up some reference photos if that would help. Um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of doing nothing crazy here. We're just kind of being creative and seeing what happens. All right, so with that layer dried, we're gonna be going back to that original flesh tone color. We wanna tie in the belly to the top part that's brown, and I'm doing that by just dry brushing that color back over that belly, hitting all the high spots, keeping all the low spots with that wash in it, and that really makes everything pop. If you don't know what dry brushing is, you're just putting paint on the brush, wiping it off on a paper towel, and very lightly dry brushing all the highlights. Very, very easy thing to do, and it makes the details really pop on it. So now it's time for all the little fine details. We're gonna start with the eyeballs, and for that I'm using Color Shift Green. It's a great green to use for the classic Jurassic Park Velociraptor eyes because it has that color shift effect going on in it, so it, it looks kind of glossy and shimmery. Uh, I really enjoy using the Color Shift colors for the eyeballs. It just makes them look really awesome, and you know, the eyeballs are the window to the soul, so you wanna make them look like they're alive. Next up, very basic here, uh, painting all of the claws with just a flat black. A nice fine tip brush or a little uh, square brush will work just fine for this, um, but really it's whatever you have on hand at the time. Uh, but remember to thin that black acrylic paint down just a little bit with water to help with flow and apply a couple of coats. All right, so the last little step here that I want to do before we seal this thing up, I'm taking a little bit of that black and adding it to the burnt umber to darken that burnt umber up just a hair. And I'm gonna dry brush on the top part of the Raptor, all of the scales and all of the little wrinkles and everything like that on the front part of the legs. I'm just catching the front top part of the scales uh, it'll really make the, um, the scaling kind of pop out on it. Just play around with the mixture until you find something that works for you. And uh, But this here will really just kind of tie the Raptor together and make it look really awesome. All right, so the last step before we call it a day, we need to protect all that hard work that we just did. So you want to seal your model up. Now this step is optional, of course, if it's going to be sitting on a shelf and you're like going to never touch it, then you could probably be all right just to not worry about sealing it. But if you're going to take it outside and do pictures or whatever, you're probably going to want to put a couple of coats of a varnish on that thing. Now, you can do it by hand like this, or uh, you can buy an acrylic spray uh, varnish, matte varnish, gloss, satin, I guess whatever you really you want it to look like if you want it to be super shiny. But um, this is an optional step. But uh, if you are going to be handling it a lot, definitely recommend throwing a coat or two of a varnish on this Raptor. And that brings us to the end of the video. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video and you found the information provided useful and you're able to use it and apply it to painting your own dinosaurs at home. And of course, for more Jurassic Park related content, you know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care, have fun painting, and I'll see you in the next video.